Okay, so in the last video, I went through how I made this look a little bit more retro, right? By layering these things up. The one thing I noticed is it did kind of muddy my chicken a little bit, which I like, but I want to see, I want to try just one really quick thing. By instead of setting this at pin light, if I set this at soft light, will it brighten up the chicken a little bit? And it does just a little bit. And I think I like that. So little, you have control of so many aspects. So playing with them matters. And then if I change it to screen, it will brighten it up even more. But way too much. All right. So, yeah, I want soft light. Good. Yes, good. Okay. So, now my final finishing techniques that have nothing to do with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black color separation, right? These are just photo finishing techniques. Seeing what it looks like in black and white, seeing what it looks like in sepia, seeing what it looks like it looks like cross-processed. So if you've ever used the app Instagram and you've taken a photo with your phone and then you've seen how the different filters uh, can make that photo look like it has different personalities, that's what I'm going to show you how to do with actions. So very similarly, we are going to flatten our image again after we've saved it. Our best image so far. And I've also saved kind of a JPEG version of it, right? And now I'm going to give it a different name. Again, I'll use this test name. So whenever I label something with test, it means I can delete it after I'm done with it, right? And now I'm going to take this flattened finished file, right? Like it's a picture I've taken with my phone and Instagram. I'm going to go to actions. And instead of doing color separation, I'm going to avoid that, that shelf. And I'm going to go right to the bottom shelf which is Carl's Customized Effects, which is basically a shelf that collects all of my favorites of actions I've created and actions that I found online that are made available to designers, right? And notice I've got a lot of them. I was really into this technique that I called Snow White for a while, which makes, yeah, you'll see. Okay, so what I wanna do is play everything on this shelf. So the way to do that is I have an action on it that's called full run up F9 to view. So I'm gonna click that one. And you are free to play with this on your flattened image. You need to, just like with the color separation, you need to have a flattened image open in Photoshop and you need to not have any other files open in Photoshop. So I'm gonna select that tape and then I'm going to play it. And then I just let the computer take over. And just like Instagram filters, it's going to make a lot of different changes to my image and give me a whole lot of options. And this would be a great finishing technique to do on your fantasy landscape before you print it to submit to the student show, right? Just to see, is there a way I could like it more? Sometimes we, um, we buy furniture we just love, like a bed and a chair that we just love. We put it in the bedroom and it looks good, but then we realize, oh, if I change the light bulbs from warm light to soft light, oh, it looks so much better. 
same thing. This is just the presentation, the finishing off of your image, right? So this one is called vintage photo effect. Now, a lot of my actions, remember, they're always safe actions, so they'll always open as new file types. So right now, I have a bunch of different, from that one test Carl assignment, I've made, I think it's 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 different variations. So what I'm going to do is say, uh, window, arrange, float all in windows. And that's going to break them all out. And then the reason I call it full run up F9 to view is because if you hit F9 and you have it set up like I have my computer set up or the digital lab set up, it will now show me all of them. Right. And then my first task is, can I find my original? And there's my original right there. It's the test Carl assignment, right? And so now, now what I want to do is I want to take my original and I want to minimize it. So that's open in my doc right there. Then I want to go back to F9 and I want to see, are there any that are interesting to me, right? This one's super saturated. Is that interesting to me? This one, which is very kind of magenta-y, is kind of interesting to me. This interesting to me. <laughs> My computer's freezing. It's showing a lot. All right. That are interesting, right? And so I think this one, which really kind of pushes the lights and darks, that's interesting. The vintage photo effect, no, it looks washed out. I can close it. This one, yeah, actually, I kind of think that's interesting. This one, no, that's crazy. Just like Instagram filters, some of them are just not going to be your taste. And so you close those ones, and you minimize the ones you think might have something to offer. Max texture is something interesting about that. No. No, the chicken's too dirty. It's nice, but no. No, <laughs> definitely not. It's good to see what your image looks like desaturated because it should still read cleanly, but no, it's not something I want to use. And then no. Too colorful. Okay, so now I open these ones back up that I minimized. And I start with my original. And that goes on the bottom, right? Then the others, I'm gonna layer on top of it. And this is how I do it just to save time. I just flatten all of these because some of them have extra things you can play with, but I say I'm just going to take them the way they are and then move them on top of my original. So I take this one and I say layer flatten. This is called Wonder Blues, great color control. I'm going to, so I flattened it. I'm going to select all of it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to close it and not save it. And then I go back to my original and I say edit paste and it pastes it right on top. So I can compare the two. Right. Now I'm going to move the next one, which is this. No, actually, maybe this one. The max texture. And that's already flattened. So if I try to say image flatten, it's already flattened. So I'm going to select it all, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to close it and not save it and then paste it on top of my test. Whoops, I pasted it on top of the wrong one. Paste it on top of here. Let's 
So now I have two kind of filter options on top of my original. And then same thing for this one, the height and drama, it's already flattened. So all I have to do is select it all. Well, I'll flatten it again because I accidentally added a layer to it. And say, copy, or no, select all, copy. You can use the shortcuts. Close it, and then paste it on top. So now I only have one file open. Now this one file has all the, the kind of filters I was interested in. And then I build them on top of each other by using opacity and blending modes if necessary, right? And I like to view it at 100%, so I'm seeing what, you know, the printing view would see. So this was my original. This is with the color control. You see it kind of dulls everything, but it gives really good white balance. And then bringing back a little bit of that max texture. I'm just doing this so I can toggle it on. Ah, uh, yeah, I like what that texture does, and it improves my color as I go and gives me a little bit more complexity. And then the final one, which is just overdone, right? Just makes everything really strong. What if I set that to pin light? And then what if I take its opacity down? because I wanted that brighter chicken a little bit. And if I put that in the group, then I can just toggle it on and off. And it's not a whole lot of difference. In printing, it would be pretty significant in terms of its saturation. Oh, but I, I, I dig it. I dig especially what it's doing in here. And then lastly, I'm going to hold down Option, and I'm going to say Layer, Merge Visible while holding down Option. So that puts everything onto one image, right? Then, because sometimes these actions can muddy our whites, I'm going to use the magic wand with Contiguous turned on. I'm going to select the border, and I'm going to say Edit Fill with 100% white. And and that will just make sure that this doesn't print like pink or something else. So now that's a clear 100% white. Now I'm gonna do just the, the most basic thing. I'm gonna go to Image, Auto Tone. And it didn't change it much, which is a good thing, which means it's already a pretty balanced image. Yeah. And so now I know this will print well. I know it's presented as strongly as it can be. I check the edges. Yeah. So this is my, my final poster, right? So I'm going to flatten this. Well, I'll save, save my test file, but that can just get deleted. But then this is the thing that I would print. This would be the, the image that I flattened as a TIFF and archived. So I'll do that if we were printing in the lab. So first I flatten it. I've already saved the PSD. And then I say file save as an archive format. And because I'm making it print ready now, I'll put PR in front of it. and save it as a TIFF. With LZW compression always. And then lastly, I want to put up my finished best poster to Photobucket. So I need to save it as and saved as a JPEG. It